Hello everyone, Redbeard here, back at it again, and today I think we finally come to the last speculation video I will be covering for the Thrones of Decay DLC, which, for those who don't know, uh, after the Shadows of Change, which is the DLC that should be coming out in maybe a month or so, there at the end of the year there will be the Thrones of Decay, which will be Nurgle, uh, the Empire, and Dwarves as a DLC. So, very excited for that. Lots of things to discuss on that, which I will link in the top right, at least one of those videos, and at the end I will link a playlist in which I, uh, for all the Thrones of Decay DLC speculation videos I've done. But without further ado, let's do the spark notes of what this video will cover. So, I think there will be at least two more dwarf DLCs with dwarves in them, one with an engineer focus, and then one that kind of covers everything that's left for the dwarves. And then I also think there will be an FLC, which I will do separate videos for all of them, and this is the first one. So for the dwarf engineer DLC, I think Grim Burluxen makes the most sense as our legendary lord. Uh, now, there are two other characters, uh, Burluck Damonson, Grimm's father, and his friend Sven Haschelfriesen, which are also notable engineer characters, but uh, I think the only things that make them unique, we can just give over to Grimm anyways. And Malachi McKyson, he has to be the legendary hero. With the, uh, the CA gave a hint of a toolbox, um, which I'm sure most of you know. And, I, I mean, I would be shocked if that wasn't Malachi McKyson. It makes way too much of sense. Especially since he is the inventor of the Thunder Barge, which is... has to be in this DLC. The Thunder Barge is the most requested unit for DLC in Total War Warhammer 3. So, it has to be in this DLC. And it would probably be a mount option for Malachi as well, in the spirit of Grugni. He also invented the Goblin Cure, which, again, I, I would probably be shocked if this wasn't in the DLC too. It's a mobile, art mobile artillery piece, crewed by Slayers. Uh, then, for some other units that I would like to see, uh, Prospectors with Drills. Basically, this is a, I, I see it as a weapons team version. Basically, Warp Grinder Dwarves. Then, Crank Gunners, basically Rattling Gun Dwarves. But better, because it's made by dwarf engineers. Uh, and then the Juggernaut is an old hammer unit. I would just really love to see a dwarves get a, a ground war machine besides the Goblin Hewer that's got, got... They should have some sort of like steam tank, I believe. Also, it would make sense if we got a unit, uh, like a blunderbuss unit, kind of like the Chaos Dwarves have, because Grim Burlickson has his Grudraker. So getting a unit of Grudrakers of some sort, and then also getting a some kind of unit with pistols, maybe Drake Fire Pistols, would also make a lot of sense. So now let's dive into the depths of the details with units first. The Dwarf Thunder Barge, class of lighter-than-air warships, hasn't quite been perfected yet. But that doesn't stop a few intrepid dwarf engineers from taking to the skies. The bomb racks, cannons, and swivel guns of the amazing flying machine can wreak devastation on enemy battle lines. Fortunately for enemies of the dwarves, few of the thunder barges have ever been constructed, and it is hard to find engineers insane or inebriated enough to fly such dangerous constructions. This unit would become the king of the skies and is known in the Gotrex and Felix novels to be a dragon killer. For its tabletop rules, it was a war machine. It had ten dwarf crew members. For its special rules, it was unbreakable, a large target, had magic resistance of three, ward save plus six, and hover. It was a high flyer, the thunder barge being only attacked by flying units. So in total war, this means it would act just in the same way that sky junks and other war balloons would. Gun platform. The thunder barge may fire its organ guns and drop bombs even if it has moved. This in total war means just fire while moving. 
Bedecked with cannons, the Thunder Barge is armed with five organ guns. One organ gun may be fired per two crew, rounding fractions up. For example, a Thunder Barge with five crew left could fire only three organ guns. Trace the line of sight and range from the organ gun's barrel. Bombs away. The Thunder Barge is fitted with racks of bombs, and the crew are skilled at using the momentum of the Thunder Barge to lob the bombs at targets on the ground that lie near to their flight path. One Thunder Bomb can be launched each turn, following the rules for firing a stone thrower, and using the following profile. The range of the attack can be measured from any point on the Thunder Barge's base. I believe the Misfires and Disasters rule would be too hard to implement in Total War. Uh, the disaster might be able to work like a, a death explosion, maybe when it crashes to the ground right below wherever the Thunder Barge were to die, or wherever it lands, it creates an explosion. Uh, maybe that could be a death ability that it, it potentially would have. For the Bedecked with Cannons rule, I think the famous Thunder Barge mod handles the many cannons of the Thunder Barge perfectly. The main missile attack is from the biggest, most powerful cannon, placed on the prow and manned by the most important member of the crew, the captain. The side cannons would be allocated to two bound abilities for the starboard and port. They may have three to five powerful volleys with a 60 second cooldown or so. For the Bombs Away, rule, I think that the tabletop rules say you can lob the bombs like a stone thrower. I don't know how that would work in Total War. I think give two bound abilities for bombs. One is for a traditional drop below the ship from the bomb racks, bombarding anything underneath. The other could be a grenade-like lobbed bomb with a focus on anti-large, so any, any fly be able to take out any flying units coming at the ship. Although, it has swivel guns, so possibly some of the dwarf crew members on the deck of the ship could be manning swivel guns on the side, which could also help protect the ship. Another idea is to give it a defensive ability similar to how real aircraft have evasive flares. Finally, its one real weakness would be uh, focused missile fire, and it should be a legendary unit similar to Dread Saurians. Uh, so you should only be able to recruit Thunder Barges uh, one at a time per Tier 5 settlement. The Goblin Hewer is an axe-throwing war machine of death invented by Malachi McKyson. It hurls a barrage of spinning axes which can quickly level infantry with armor-piercing capability. It is best used if targeting the enemy's flank. It has similar range and missile strength to a bolt thrower, but with a faster rate of fire. It is crewed by slayers and an engineer. It would be mobile at around 40 speed, unbreakable, and would be decent at defending itself in melee. A good comparison to an existing Total War unit would probably be the Skull Cannon of Corn. In tabletop, it could be manned by a dragon slayer, the hero version of a slayer. So in Total War, it would act as a mount for said hero. Malachi, and possibly a Demon Slayer generic lord. The Empire have steam tanks and war wagons. The Skaven have doom flayers and doom wheels. The Chaos Dwarves have iron demons. The Dwarves deserve a comparable tank like Ground War Machine. That's where the Juggernaut comes in. No, not the Metal Corn Rhino, and no, not the Chorf Siege Engine. The Dwarf Juggernaut is a steam boiler powered wagon that can be armed with smaller cannons or organ guns. I could also see it having a bolt thrower or crank gun variant. If we were to base it off the third edition Old Hammer model, I see it as a four entity unit similar to the Empire War Wagon. I imagine they would have similar speed at roughly 50, working off a similar engine with comparable damage output to war wagons or bear sleds. Like war wagons though, I imagine you would want to keep them out of melee if you want them to survive. On the other hand, we've seen unofficial tabletop models and Total War mods that reimagine the Joggernaut as a single entity closer to the steam tank or iron demon. 
and personally this is what I would prefer, this would feel more in line with the dwarf play style in my opinion. Whereas the wagon version may have less than 100 armor, a tank version may have 120 to 160. It would be unbreakable, never routing. It would also be more capable of, or at least defending itself with steam blasts or battering animations, or perhaps even from crew throwing blasting charges out of murder holes. It would most likely be armed with a heavy cannon or organ gun, Perhaps, though, to be different, it could be armed with a mortar or crank gun or even a flame cannon. Whether wagon or tank, I think the Juggernaut could be a great mount for legendary or generic lord or heroes who are engineers. That covers the war machines I would like to see. Now let's talk about weapons, teams, units. Crank Gunners are Gatling gun wielding engineers who could essentially be a reskin of the Rattling guns currently in game. However, I have not seen them depicted as needing a second man to carry their ammo, and they are far more capable at maintaining their weapons than Skaven. Overall, the Crank Gun should feel very similar to Rattling guns, but perhaps have slightly less damage but slightly more range. Uh, a great DPS unit with the suppressing contact effect which is the king of volume of fire units. Crank gunners would be engineers in their own right, and I would love for this to be explored through bound and or passive abilities. Perhaps they have an aura that grants nearby allies increased reload skill, accuracy, or range. Perhaps they have the dig in ability giving increased range to themselves if they stand still for a minute. Maybe they could have the two uses of more ammo to replenish themselves or allies. Maybe they could even spawn defensive stakes, though we haven't seen those in Total War yet. They are popular in mods, though. We could make those vanilla. Prospectors would essentially be a weapons team variant of miners and also a reskin of a Skaven unit, being the Warp Grinders. I see them having comparable stats to warp grinders and being armor piercing with vanguard deployment and can attack walls. Health at around 4000, low melee stats around 20, but decent weapon strength at around 100, almost all armor piercing. Additionally, they would have the siege attacker rule. They may also have a similar bound ability as warp quake or seismic snare, which may slow, immobilize, or even damage enemies caught in its radius. On the other hand, I see them being more comparable to minor stats in that they would have 80 armor, 68 leadership, and 28 speed. I would also like it if they had an ability that represented their ability to tunnel. The mod I'm now showing gives them essentially this in a teleport. Unfortunately, in the mod, it does the teleport instantly at seemingly unlimited range across the map. I think this ability would be a great utility piece in your army strategy, but would need a limited range, say 200 meters, and possibly have the unit disappear for 30 seconds before they appear at the location you choose. Additionally, it would probably have a 90 second cooldown. Briefly, I want to mention Dwarf Snipers. It has been much requested that Dwarves get a long-range Marksman unit, which to be fair, the, if the Skaven, Cathay, and the Empire have the technology to have sniper rifles, the Dwarves definitely could as well. Whether it would essentially be a reskin of Gisales, like the Crane Gunners, or perhaps a variant of Bugman's Rangers, I will explore more in a future video. So everything I've talked about so far with War Machines and Weapons Teams feels like new DLC units. The infantry variants we'll talk of now feel more like they should be FLC that I just hope could also make it in. First, a unit based off Grim Burlickson's invention, the Grudge Raker. Essentially, these would be a Thunderer variant that acts like a reskin of the Chaos Dwarf Blunderbuss. Though the Grudge Raker may shoot two volleys, but ultimately have the same range and damage output. Otherwise, very similar with 80 armor, shields, and a 20 to 30 melee stat range. Beyond that, there are three pistol variants that could make their way into the game. Foremost, I believe, is Slayers with Gunpowder Pistols, also known as Slayer Pirates. 
I think the Slayer part of the roster needs some serious love, especially for Ungrim campaigns, but would also make the random Slayer spawn pool more interesting for all dwarves. Goblin Hewers for an arty war machine, Slayer Pirates for a ranged skirmish infantry, Doom Seekers for an aspiring champion, Dragon Slayers for a generic hero, and maybe even a Demon Slayer for a generic lord. I'll talk more on this later and in future videos. For now, Slayer Pirates would almost exactly be your standard Slayers stat-wise meets Free Company Militia. Their melee stats and weapon strength would be slightly less than Slayers with exactly the same missile stats as Free Company. A final note, perhaps they could be named Slayers with pistols and be skinned as such, and Slayer Pirates could be a whole other reskin for Aranessa or the Dogs of War race pack in the future. On to the next variant, I would love to see Iron Drakes and potentially Lord variants wielding Drake Fire pistols. These pistols essentially are a slightly longer range more focused shot of the drake gun flamethrower we know and love. These magma bullets would not be so different from the Chaos Dwarf Fire Glaives or the, the Chaos Dwarf Fire Pistol that the Lords wield. Perhaps they may even cause the flammable contact effect to work in concert with drake guns or flame cannons. Oh, and these iron drakes should absolutely wield a brace of these puppies for maximum effect. Lastly, there is a possible Iron Breaker variant with gunpowder pistols instead of blasting charges. Definitely the least interesting of these pistol variants, in my opinion, but it's possible. They would be similar to Armored Cossars in that they would have a low ammo count, probably, with maybe only six shots. Now for our legendary characters. Grim Burlickson should probably get either a unique magic weapon in his Grudge Raker or his Cog Axe. His Grudge Raker would have hopefully two ammo types. One where it is a shotgun at about 100 range, and then another which is a rifle which could add another 50 to 100 range. The rifle being better at taking out single entities, and the Grudge Raker being better at clearing out infantry blobs. The Cog Axe could catch and break enemy weapons, and in that is, is probably the more likely to be a unique magic item of the two weapons. Uh, I think it could, it could give Grim a bound ability in which he could lower melee attack and melee defense in order to represent the breaking a weapon capability in lore. Because obviously you can't, you can't break an enemy's weapon in Total War. That just doesn't work. I think he should inherit his father's bionic arm, which will raise his weapon strength to be quote-unquote unsurpassed. So that means, I mean, I don't know if he should break the weapon, or, you know, top the weapon strength of Grombrindle, or Thorgrim, or even or Ungrim, but uh, like his melee stats would be worse, his weapon strength may be more, and he should be similarly armored still. So if you know they have 120 armor, he has 100 armor. I think Grim should get gyrocopter and gyro bomber mounts, as should all the engineers. Uh, I would like it if maybe his gyrocopter or gyro bomber had unique ammo, like a drake gun or flame cannon or a crank gun. Just something unique would be nice. And then uh, maybe he could get a potential land tank mount like the juggernaut. And in his skills or traits, he should be able to basically he has modified crossbow bolts and enhanced black powder so he boosts his factions all of the ranged and engineer units so for the flc legendary hero it's got to be malachi mckyson he's pictured as having a brace of pistols could be gunpowder could be drake fire his model shows a long barreled gun resting on his shoulder that could be a handgun rifle or a grudge raker. His model also has a hammer on the back 
Perhaps this could be a cog hammer. He should have goblin hewer and thunder barge mounts. The thunder barge being a unique one called the Spirit of Grugly. In the card game art, he is depicted firing a crank gun off of what appears to be a thunder barge. So his prow gun should be the ultimate crank gun. He should heavily buff war machines, but also anything in the wheelhouse of engineer and slayer themed units, lords and heroes. Malachi is most well known for transporting people in cargo, so he should heavily buff trade and possibly diplomacy with human factions. As we see with most DLCs, we should get a generic level lord and hero that somewhat match what comes with the theming of the pack and the legendary characters themselves. So having a guild master engineer lord would make a lot of sense. He could have a variety of weapon options such as the hero level has now, such as a grudge raker, a sniper rifle, a crank gun, any number of things. Then I also think that engineer lord should and the heroes, by the way, should get gyrocopter and gyro bomber mounts. Maybe the Lord level gets the gyro bomber and possibly a juggernaut land tank mount. I don't think they should get thunder barges. I just, I think that should be it only for Malachi McKyson. These are pretty rare uh, to be built by engine, any engineer, but an outcast having them, you know, makes sense. So, then, there could be another option in a Iron Warden, possibly, Lord or Hero. So, the Iron Warden is a champion level unit, I guess, that, uh, for the Iron Drake. So, you could have one champion in ev every group in Tabletop. That's the, what the Iron Warden is. So, maybe that could be a Lord or Hero with a drake gun, a troll hammer, torpedo, drake fire pistols. Just a thought, could maybe work as, as far as his skills and talents, just like the Guildmaster Engineer. But for our hero option, I think we need a Dragon Slayer. So that is the, the hero level version of a Slayer. And would probably just have his dual axes, be an anti-large hero with low armor but high physical resistance. And, as I said before, may get a Goblin Hewer mount. For Grimm's unique faction mechanic, I don't think CA in particular needs to get too fancy. And by that I mean we just should have a re reskin of Ickit's Workshop. So, I would make four channels for a dwarf version of the Workshop. One for flying war machines, such as gyros and thunder barges. One for infantry, such as crank gunners, iron drakes, and prospectors. One for artillery, and possibly goblin hewers or juggernauts. And then the main page, which buffs the faction in general. Dwarves don't currently have a nuke-style equivalent to the Doom Rocket. Though, since Elspeth arguably has an equivalent in the amulet she gives Theodore, it would make sense also to create a similar weapon for Grimm in a DLC where they both face off against Tamarkan. For what I could find of dwarf super weapons, we already have Zufbar 42 pounders in game as an army ability, but then there is also mention of a weapon called Grugni's Hammer and Barrack Var. Some of the largest artillery batteries in the world can be found in the coastal defenses, including Grugni's Hammer, which is said to have sunk a black arc with a single shot. Now, for reference, black arcs are gigantic floating settlements that was sunk with one shot from this weapon. For the dwarves on whole, and what a rework in Thrones of Decay DLC would look like, I actually think their mechanics are pretty good with the old gold update, like the Smith Shop, the old gold. Uh, I think it all works pretty well. One thing I really think needs to change is their tech tree. Now, the tech tree itself is really good, but it's also very big and it's all on one page. 
I think you need to split the tech tree into three like the chaos dwarves for quality of life. Now for a quick review of starting positions, I think the city of Zufbar in the province of Blackwater for Grim Berlixen, and the city of Nulm in the province of Wissenland for Elspeth von Draken would be the most loreful start positions thematically, but Carl Franz is in Reichland right next door to Elspeth in that case, and then Grimm would be right in between Ungrim and Thorgrim, so these probably, in all actuality, don't make sense. Gilt, I don't count in Soland over there, because I think he has to move. Uh, Tilia probably being my best alternative for Gilt as to where to go, uh, and besides the fact that I think... Averland is eventually going to be the home of Marius Lightdorf. I think in all likelihood he'll be the Southern Empire character. So, where to put Elspeth and Grimm? So there's Carrick Azorn in the Mountains of Morn, which could make for a great star position for Grimm. This puts him in contest with Ogres and Chaos Dwarves. Being the Engineer character, I think this is great. On the other hand, he could potentially, in the frame of Sven Haschelfrieschen, make a voyage on down to Lustria, and that could be a very different start position for a dwarf. Personally, I like him closer to the World's Edge of Mountains, and I think the Mountains of Morn is at least in the proximity. You know, that way, if for a long campaign victory, maybe you have to eventually reclaim Zufbar. And in that case, you know, it's much more obtainable. For Elspeth, I thought long and hard about this. Now, she could kind of go anywhere, because she's known for, you know, she killed the uh, vampire Ushara, I believe, uh, down near Lamia. And she's gone out to different places to kill different chaotic characters. So, I thought about it, and now Pig Barter, in the province of the Mouth of Ruin, is a location that I thought maybe would be best for a Dogs of War character somewhere in the future. But, now I'm thinking it could be a very, very good location for Elspeth. This puts her near chaotic characters, so she could be like out on a mission fighting them. The, uh, she's at the, the mouth of the River Ruin, which would be a very powerful conduit of death magic uh, of Shaish. So, yeah, she would be very powerful within this region, lorefully. And, yeah, I just think it makes a lot of sense to put her in this region. This also puts her close to Lamia, where she lawfully hunted down some vampires, too. Uh, and possibly close to Nagash at some point. You know, maybe that could be... She gets some special landmark when she takes over uh, Nagashazar. Then, that leaves us with Tamarkan, who I think is easy. You just put him in Kandatha. You know? Uh, Kugath is down south, so putting another uh, Nurgle character up north near the cities of Zambajin. This is also near where the Kurgans uh, are based, so Kadatha just makes way too much sense. I think that's an easy slam dunk. Now, for the Realms of Chaos, though. Um, now, I think for Grimm and Elspeth, where we talked about Wissenland and uh, Zufbar before, now, now, in the Realms of Chaos, those positions are perfect. Um, just because, you know, we, we're not we're not worried about Carl Franz or Ungrim or Thorgrim at this point in these campaigns or in the realms of chaos campaign. Now for Tamarkan, this is actually where things change. I don't think Kadatha really works that well unless they move Kugath. If they move Kugath, then they can put Tamarkan and Kadatha. Otherwise, they'd be neighbors, and that just doesn't make a lot of sense. So I think the best alternative to, for Tamarkan would be probably the Mountains of Morn. He lorefully goes from the Kurgan uh, territories uh, near and to Zambajin, 
And then he goes down through the Mountains of Morn, then through the Dark Lands, through the Border Princes, and then up towards, finally, Nulm, where the story comes to a close. So, yeah. That's why, I, I mean, I think there's plenty of space in the Mountains of Morn. That's probably the best position for him. And now we come to one more bonus section that I call the Mutter's Room. Now, that is to say that I don't think these units will ever be in vanilla, but could act as good inspiration for modders. The first being War Balloons. So these were a unit in the Mana War supplement, which are basically just gyrocopters with uh, little balloons. So like, think if you, uh, you know, just kind of mashed a gyrocopter and a Cathayan sky junk uh, together, or a, sky, a war balloon, whatever they're called. Um, what, these are totally not necessary. I think they would just be worse gyrocopters at that point. But, you know, it's a cool tabletop model. A uh, steam golem. So, a uh, steam golem. We, we are, we're already expecting rune golems at some point, or rune guardians. So, probably not much need for rune golems. But, lorefully, rune golems and guardians are not in the roster because the, you know the know-how to make them or maintain them has been kind of lost in time due to the just kind of crumbling of the dwarven civilization but maybe that that's where steam golems come in maybe you know certain factions like thoric ironbrow can wield the rune golems but other factions have to use steam golems right so that would be an exclusive for thoric yeah but, you know, so maybe that's how Steam Golems could come in. I also think they could act as, like, a blueprint for maybe Storm Fiends for the Skaven. So you could have, like, a melee variant of this, like, monstrous infantry construct. And it has, uh, a, yeah, a melee variant. And then it has maybe a crank gun variant. Then it maybe it has a cannon variant. Or a drake gun variant. So, just some ideas. Uh... Now, an earth borer drill. An earth borer drill would just be, it kind of be like almost an iron demon or a skull cracker. You know, it would be this little wagon with a giant drill on the front. It'd be good at breaking down walls, barriers. It'd be decent in melee with armor piercing. But, you know, again, we have, I think, prospectors as like a weapons team type unit is just probably what I would prefer to get and I think most people are on that boat as well uh, war balloon squadrons so this is based off like the Caradron overlords which some people will just <laughs> just not be about that but I th I'm just saying they you know could be an interesting unit kind of like Doom Knights of Zinch where they just float around um, and, and can protect things like a Thunder Barge they might also have a pistol on hand, which would make them sort of like the deck droppers. So, think of a mix between Doom Knights of Zinch and deck droppers. That sounds pretty tight to me. Now, there was a supplement called Mad Inventions that gave us a couple possible ideas for units. Again, not, not something I see coming to vanilla. The Heliord Detonation Device. The real reason this won't ever come is because it is OP. Okay, so... Basically, think of a bloated corpse, a unit you send into melee, it can blow up and wipe out an entire units, right? Now, think of an RC car with a bomb on it, and then house it in armor plating. Yeah, that's OP, right? Because the one weakness of the bloated corpse is that it can get shot to hell before it makes it there, and then it's just a waste of a unit at that point, right? The hell your de detonation device? It would probably always make it to its target you know unless it gets caught out by like a single entity but even then it might do a considerable amount of damage so yeah two op now the mark 7 slayer armor this kind of goes against the whole theming of slayers with the lack of armor and the oath to die but the mark slayer Ar the mark 7 slayer armor could act as a mount option to the Dragon Slayer Hero or the Demon Slayer Lord. That way, you you know, you get a Slayer Hero on foot that suddenly turns into a Slayer Hero on an Astrogoth-esque uh, 
walking suit of armor. So, that could act as a good mount, I, I suppose, for a slayer hero or lord. Or Malachi. So, the gyro multi-seater. Again, this is another gyrocopter variant. I don't know why we would, we would need it. Could be a mount option. Maybe it could have a crank gun or multiple crank guns on it. That way, the whole multi-seater thing makes sense, I guess. And could be something different. The Death Roller. This is a Blood Bowl unit. So, again, not probably in the veal house of anything that would come vanilla. But, it is pretty freaking cool. Think of the Doom Flayers for the Skaven. And that's that's how I imagine the Death Rollers. A four-entity kind of chariot unit that just rolls around and grinds up units. Now, the Doom Flayers right now aren't very good. But the general idea is they should grind up infantry and be able to roll right through ranks of infantry without being impeded or uh, taking much damage. So just lawnmower type units. And then finally, a uh, bonus on the bonus. I think the dwarves could use like a low tier mortar like the Empire has. Again, it's just one of those things that it's like, if these other cultures have it, why, w why wouldn't the dwarves? And... Finally, that brings it to a wrap. Uh, let me know what you guys want to see with the Dwarf Engineer DLC. Do you like these ideas? How would you expand on them? Let me know in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe. You know, if you uh, enjoyed this stuff. And uh, I plan to probably do a video or two just kind of glancing over my thoughts on what the DLC after the Thrones of Decay will be like. So the Slanesh DLC is what I'm talking about. And then the Corn DLC following it. Yeah, so thanks for being here. Uh, hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace.